ban on importation, production, distribution, and use of styrofoam and single-use plastics in some parts of the country. Issues and gaps. More job opportunities for skilled workforce in Oshun State as federal government is set to construct renewed hope housing estate. Plus, federal government's legacy project to touch lives of people in the north central zone with the construction of a super highway across the zone. It's good to have you join us on the correspondence this week. We have a package that will worth your while. I am Zenret Dingmun. You're welcome. We begin with issues of environmental degradation. And according to the Nigerian constitution, it is the responsibility of the federal government to protect and improve the environment for present and future generations and to ensure the well-being of all Nigerians. Research shows that 25 to 30 percent of landfills are dedicated to plastics, including styrofoams, which take at least 500 years to decompose. Now, single-use plastics or styrofoams are reported to be the primary source of urban dirt and major pollutants of oceans and seas. The use of these harmful items in ministries, departments and government agencies has been banned, but concerns remain. How informed are the manufacturers and people who consume them about the adverse effect they pose? Correspondent Charles Alpha has been interrogating these issues. Styrofoam widely known as takeaway pack used by food vendors such as these ones behind me. Plastic, all single use. Do you know that they constitute one of the biggest environmental health challenges? Single use plastics, experts say contains polystyrene, which leaches into food and drinks causing contamination. Uh, Nigeria generates on an annual basis an estimated amount of about 32, 32 million tons of solid waste. Out of that, about 15% translating to about 5 million tons is plastic. And um, if you look at our environment, you see that plastic is a menace. Generally speaking, you see them on our streets, you see them clogging our, our drains, you see them in our markets, in our offices, in our homes, everywhere. So it is therefore important that we take a very serious look at the way we currently manage our plastic wastes. Both on land and on water are consuming this plastic and we in turn as humans consume this animal as food. So we take in those microplastics into our system and they constitute serious health challenges for us. And that is why we continue to see increasing cases of cancer. The production use and disposal of polystyrene have shown releases toxic chemicals responsible for Parkinson's disease, irritation of the skin, eyes, as well as creating of large amount of greenhouse gases. Uh, plastic, apart from it being a, a pollution um, menace, you know, littering our streets and our market and our homes, it also has some effect on biodiversity. It clogs our seas and our oceans and microplastics, which are tiny plastics that are broken down, are also incriminated in some of the loss of biodiversity that we're having, especially in our ocean. It is these alarming health problems posed by the use of single-use plastics or styrofoam. The federal government decided to ban the use of the items in ministries, departments and agencies. And that is why in January this year, we started from the Federal Ministry of Environment, where we introduced the ban of single-use plastics in all the departments and agencies, projects and programs of the Federal Ministry of Environment. We implemented that for six months and we saw how it went. We learned our lesson and we felt that having implemented it for six months, we should scale up. And then that's why we now scaled up and we approached FEC to now scale up to involve all ministries, departments and agencies 
of the federal government of Nigeria. To be banned with the MDAs and uh, by the federal government, I would say it's a step in the right direction because it is very clearly something that will have to also change behavior. In finding an alternative to styrofoams or single-use plastics, Restaurants and food service brands have been encouraged to use compostable containers. Now, for food vendors, there are definitely alternatives. You know, first is to, pro, to, to encourage the practice of reusing plastics rather than use it and throw it away. Styrofoam or single-use plastic, we have been told, take over 500 years to decompose. And this is because it is non-biodegradable. And the kind of chemical they emit into the environments make them most dangerous air pollutants affecting man and his environment. Charles Alpha joins us now to discuss further the ban on styrofoam in Nigeria. Good to see you again on the program, Charles. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. Okay. Let's begin with this. The increasing use of styrofoam and single-use plastics, as you have pointed out, poses significant environmental and public health risks, especially pollution in the waterways and soil and even the air quality. What do you think of the awareness coming at this time? Is it apt or tad late? Okay, uh, I wouldn't say uh, the awareness is late. Uh, what I would say is that more awareness needs to be intensified because uh, Nigeria in 2020 adopted the National Plastic Management Policy and just uh, recently, in 2022, uh, it also, along with 174 countries in Nairobi, also assigned an international uh, an international uh, legal, legally binding agreement on ending plastic uh, by year 2040. Now, all of this uh, tend towards, uh, it speaks of the kind of intention that Nigeria has and the awareness, you know, in the uh, damaging effects, you know, styrofoam and single-use plastic can have on the people. And so, uh, they decided that ending plastic right from the production to the design to the disposal to uh, the recycling has enormous effects on the ecosystem, life underwater, man and animal, uh, the environment in entirety. And so uh, the awareness is there. Uh, what, like I said, is not really, really there is you know, the intensity, the way they go about creating the awareness. So Nigeria is aware of the enormity of the effect of styrofoam and single-use plastic. So uh, I, I believe that rather than leaving this to just government, government alone cannot do it, uh, the media, just like we are doing right now, NTA is in the forefront you know, of uh, creating awareness on plastic. And this shows in the kind of reports that uh, we have rolled out of in recent times that uh, they have to do with the environment. The health implications of the use of styrofoam are enormous, you know, due to the chemicals found in it. And we hear links to issues of cancer, vision and hearing loss, impaired memory and concentration, as well as um, nervous system effects. Now, based on your research and coverage of the bits, how true are these claims and why are there these materials still attractive to Nigerians, even with all of this? Okay, so I, I would say that um, single-use plastic, as uh, from reports are available to us, we know that Nigeria generates over 30 million tons of waste. And out of that, 50% uh, is plastic related and the enormity of the uh, effect, the devastating effects on man and the environment is huge. We, you may also have heard that uh, this styrofoam, single use plastic, you know, take over 500 to 1 million years to decompose. And when they break down into microplastic, you know, they find a way into our uh, 
uh, our ocean and other water bodies, life underwater get threatened. And you know, when we get these uh, animals, when we eat them for food, it invariably affects us as, as human. So you may have found at some point that, why do animals eat plastic? I mean, they eat leather and all of a sudden you, see, you hear that they are dead. It's because it is harmful to the system. And when this animal eats it, and we, in turn, eat them, they create some kind of you know, uh, uh, problem for us as human beings. So it is creating a whole lot of environmental problems. Okay, let's talk about um, regulation now. How active do you think regulatory agencies are in monitoring the quality of packaged foods and beverages to ensure global best practices? Okay, like in the Ministry of Environment, so we have NESRIA. Now, NESRIA is responsible for uh, some of the rules, I mean, some of the regulations that uh, need to be adhered to by factories, companies, but we talk of uh, food and packaging. Uh, that is left to NAVDAC. And I do know that NAVDAC, on their part, you know, they are doing a lot in... Um, packaging of food and the kind of materials that are used, you know, to package the kind of food that we eat. I believe NAPDAC is doing so much in that area. They're climbing down on some products that they know is harmful to the uh, human and also to the environment. The same way NESRIA, which is the regulatory body in the Federal Ministry of Environment, is so on its part in a, a different area, also regulating the kind of, you know, materials that um, is being produced. We know that from the point of production to consumption, re, uh, disposal and recycling, factory who, who, who uh, go into the production of this styrofoam and plastic, they also have some environmental regulation to also adhere to. And so in as much as NAPDAC is doing its part in the kind of food that is being packaged, Nestle on its part is also regulating factories in th that are into the production of um, of uh, styrofoam, uh, single-use plastic, as the case may be, to ensure that they do not embark on they do not embark on uh, uh, activity that will have adverse effect on human lives and the environment. Okay, let's talk about the alternative eco-friendly materials. What are they and what measures have been put in place to enable businesses and industries have a smooth transition to the alternative eco-friendly materials? Okay, so like you said there, and we have said while we talk, we speak here, I also said that transitioning, outright banning will not be a thing that is recommended as it is right now. When you see people should not use single-use plastic, people should not use styrofoam and all of that, there has to be an alternative for them to use. And all of these questions, you know, were you know, thrown at the Federal Ministry of Environment, the Minister of State for Environment. And I can tell you that while we spoke, there were lots of measures. He, he, he did say uh, government is putting in place, for instance, some have recommended that rather than having single-use plastic and throwing it away, why not have water bottle and get your water, get your water anywhere, uh, a clean source and move around with your water bottle rather than, you know, using a single-use plastic. Single-use plastic, let me just say, is a situation where these are plastic that you use once and throw away and a water bottle, you know, fall into, falls into this category. Uh, the styrofoam which uh, is used in serving food, you eat once. The kind th those plastics you use once and throw away are the kind of plastic that constitutes waste in the environment. And what the federal uh, government is and the federal minister of environment is against is the act of using it once and throwing it away. So they are recommending that if you must use plastic, it has to be. The time that you use and reuse and reuse, for instance, you have your water bottle, you can go to a water dispenser, you get your water, you drink, and you don't have to throw it away. All you do, at least, is to wash and, you know, reuse again to reduce the extent to which uh, plastics, uh, you know, litter the, the urban center and all of that. 
Finally, before we let you go, as an environment uh, correspondent, remind us again, because you were here uh, at some point, but remind us again how you're faring uh, in terms of personal and career growth. So, Zeret, I, I must say that from the very first day uh, till now, I would say that I have learned so much on what the environment is, the the, the challenges of climate change, the the things, the effects and all of that. I can tell you right now that uh, what I know now, I didn't know it, you know, from previous times. And so it is a process of learning for me. And I'm grateful for the platform NCA has created for us to be able to grow. Quite interesting there, Charles. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your thoughts with us on the program. And we hope to see you again sometime soon. Thank you, Zerit, for the time. All right. All right. And still to come, federal government to utilize direct labor in the construction of the Renewed Hope housing estate across the Federation. And that's after this break. Join us again. The world needs mums. With a splash of golden terra oil, a mum can transform a frown into a smile. Change no thanks into yes please. Resolve family feuds without blowing a whistle. Providing tasty family meals is all that matters. Where there are moms, there is love. Golden Terra Oil or pure love. Fellow Nigerians, this period may be hard on us and there is no doubt that it's tough on us. But I urge you all to look beyond the present temporary pains and aim at the larger picture. All our good and helpful plans are in the works. More importantly, I know that they will work. You're watching The Correspondence. And now to the North Central Zone, where the federal government is set to commence the construction of a superhighway across the zone to Abuja. This was disclosed by the Minister of Works, Dave Umahi, at a stakeholders meeting in Lafia. The infrastructure, which is known as the Legacy Project, is in line with the present administration's commitment to connect states with robust and resilient infrastructure that will stimulate economic growth in the country. Correspondent Aliut Jani reports. It's a cherry news for the people of North Central Zone when Minister of Works David Umayi takes a message of renewed hope to the zone. A six-lane dual-carried superhighway of concrete with solar light and rail track is what will be constructed from Calabar to Ebonyi, linking Kogi to Benue, and Nasrawa to terminate in Abuja. The project Minister of Works Dave Umahi says will enhance transportation and open new corridors for economic activities. I want to assure you that this is beyond road construction, but it's an investment because it is a catalyst that is going to revive the entire economy of Nigeria. Governors of Nasrawa Kogi and Deputy Governor of Benue State described the superhighway projects initiated by President Bola Tinibu as life change infrastructure that will transform the nation's infrastructure landscape and promise to support its realization in the zone. I also want to commend the Honorable Minister for his constant campaign on concrete roads. This strategic project will open up our rural communities that produce tons of foodstuffs, which ended up being undervalued for not finding their way back to the market. Stakeholders from the zone, including former APC national chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adam, Senator Umaru Tanku al Makura, Senator Ahmed Wadada, Emir of Lafia, among others, commend President Bola Tinibu for building resilient economy through robust infrastructure for prosperity of the nation. This network of roads that the Honorable Minister enunciated in the course of his remarks 
The road network in Nigeria will speak for itself. That as critical stakeholders in this community, we are going to support you in every way possible towards community engagement so that this project could take off successfully and also be completed in the time you saw conceived. The North Central Zone is also benefiting from another superhighway project from Badagri to Sokoto, which will pass through Kwara and Niger states. That's right, Aliu. Good road network across the Federation will indeed improve the living standard of Nigerians. What more can they ask for? That is the dividend of democracy. And there is another dividend of democracy in the housing sector as the federal government flags of the renewed Hope Estate in Oshun State. The project is to address the housing deficit in Nigeria and boost the local economy. It is also expected to generate jobs for more than 6,500 artisans in Oshun through its renewed hope 250 units housing estate project in the state. Now, the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Dengiwa, stated this at the groundbreaking ceremony of the estate in Oshobo. Correspondent Femi Afariogun tells us more. Spread on a large expanse of land and about two minutes' drive from the Osho State Secretariat is the renewed old 250 housing estate. The Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Dagiwa, alongside his Minister of State, Tijani Guazo, with Osho State Deputy Governor, Prince Kola Adewusi, performed the groundbreaking for the estate. The estate is expected to have 50 units of one-bedroom semi-detached bungalows, 150 units of two-bedroom semi-detached bungalows, and 50 units of three-bedroom semi-detached bungalows. With this housing program, we plan to unlock the, the massive potential of housing development to create jobs, uplift lives, and boost economic development. This is in line with the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President. This 250 housing unit estate will create job opportunities during the construction phase of for mason, bricklayers, plumbers, electricians, traders, and suppliers of building materials. The federal government intends to deliver 50,000 housing units to Nigerians on the other phase one of the project. We have designed these housing units in a way that makes them affordable for to acquire by using organic designs to allow for future expansion as the income of beneficiaries increases. This means that a one-bedroom unit can be expanded to two bedrooms, and a two-bedroom unit can also be expanded to three-bedroom units as the owner's financial position increases or their family grows further. We also want developers to adhere to the timeline and first and finish within the three months so that we can begin the process of getting ocean indigents to purchase and move in. The effort of President Bolamet Tinubu was commended by the Osho State Government and contractors handling the project. The initiation of this project, Renewed Hope Housing Estate, is a testament to his administration dedication to providing affordable housing and sustainable living environments for all. So I appeal to the controller, please work with the contractors. Let's see that this is delivered within time. We want to assure our dear Honorable Minister that we are committed to ensuring that the renewed hope estate meet the highest quality standard. Our team is dedicated to completing this project within the stipulated time frame, adhering to all specifications provided. Just a few days after the flag off of this place, there is extensive construction going on. It is expected that within months, this place will be transformed into a vibrant community. Yes, Femi, federal government is working hard to provide shelter for Nigerians as one of the basic needs of man. Thanks a lot. And that does it on the correspondence this week. Join us again on another package next week. From all of us here, it's bye for now.